no matter how well you plan your garden, there comes a time when you have to move a rose. It could be for various reasons. Wrong color, it's getting too big, all kinds of different reasons you have to do this. And I've got a couple tips for you that'll help you move a rose during the growing season. Now the best time to move them is during the dormant season. We have a video for that called Moving Roses During the Dormant Season. But if you have to move it in spring or even the heat of summer, I want to show you a couple little tips that'll help move that along. This is the rose I'm going to move. It's an old moss rose called Madame Platts. And we're just going to move it. We're expanding our vegetable garden. We've already moved one dormant rose out of here. So now we're going to move this rose while it's actively growing. It's June. It's probably about 85 degrees today. Let's talk a little bit about preparing the rose to get moved. Because there are some things you can do even days beforehand. Irrigate, irrigate, irrigate. You want to make sure the rose has good water in it. If you have drip irrigation, that's a real good way because that just slowly soaks up the water. If you can get a garden hose to it, put the hose on trickle like a couple days beforehand and put it on trickle for about a half hour to 45 minutes. Let it kind of flood this area. Just let it soak up all kinds of water. That's the best way to get that rose ready to get actively moved. The other thing that I've done is I've cut out some dead wood, thinned it off a little bit. I had some old foliage. I pulled some foliage off. All I'm trying to do by that is lessen the amount of foliage and canes that this root system, which is going to be diminished when I pull it out, has to feed. I'm trying to get a more proportional balance to lessen the shock. So just remember that. Irrigate and water. Now, we have to actually move the rose itself. Here's a couple tips. Ideally, it would be great if we could just snap our fingers and voila, the rose is moved. Cheers. But we all know life doesn't work that way. It's going to take a little bit of elbow grease to get this thing moved. Now, we've done years of research at the Ashdown Rose Moving Institute, and we've developed an incredibly wonderful way to use a couple of tools, very complex, to help you move this rose. And after years of research, we've discovered the best two tools, a couple of shovels. Well, I've brought you in real close because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. You don't need to watch me at this point. What I'm doing is taking this pointed shovel, that's the first one, the pointed one, and I'm just working a circle around the plant itself. All I'm trying to do is just kind of loosen some dirt around it. You can see I'm hitting some roots, and I'm just cutting those roots. That's okay. That's what I want to do. What I'm going to attempt to do is get a root ball with this. Unlike the dormant rows, where we shook the soil off and bare rooted it, this case we want to bring soil and roots with it. And so that's what I'm trying to do right here. So I'm going to continue to do this, work it around it, and then I've got a little tip I've learned that I think will help you out. Done with that. I've cut the root system around it and basically left a root ball. I'm about probably eight inches away from the center of the plant. That's going to give me enough root ball to take with me. Now, here's where all those years at the Ashdown Rose Moving Institute come into play. Because what I'm going to do now is show you a little trick that I learned about 10 years ago completely by accident to move a rose, have a handle to move it with, and keep the root ball intact. The shovel that had the pointed blade, that's in the ground over here. I've got a square shovel here, square bladed shovel. I like using this. You can use two pointed ones if you have to. On the opposite side of this one, I'm going to drive this straight into the ground. You can see the rose is already beginning to move here. Got a couple roots here to get through still until I can get some going. Okay, now I've got a shovel on either side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to literally pull this thing out of the ground by using both of these blades. And what I'm going to do is pull it out with the root ball intact and that root ball sandwiched and held in place with the two shovels. I'm going to bring you in closer so you can watch this and see how it works. Here we go. Wish me luck. There you go. You can see what I have now is I have a little rose root ball sandwich right here being held in place with these two shovels. And I can just pick this rose up by grabbing the blade underneath and I've got not only got an intact root ball but I've also got something to hold it together while I move it. Let's watch that again in slow motion, shall we?
got you in close again because I really want you to see what I'm doing here. When I carried the rose from the other location to here, as you can tell, it's hot and I'm sweating. I had a, I grabbed the two handles together here and I'm holding this like this. If it's a big rose, get two people. One to hold the handle, one to hold the actual blade itself. But I hope that gives you an idea of how I'm carrying this plant. Resting on that square shovel with the root ball so it's not collapsing and falling apart on me. It's the same way that I eased it out of the ground. Now, planting, it's the opposite. I'm going to do the opposite of what I just did. I'm going to take the rose. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of the cane to support it here. I'm going to slip it right back into the ground. Shovel's intact. Then, what I'm going to do is start putting dirt around it. Which I've got here. Straighten it up a little bit. I can always do a little straightening later, too, by the way. Alistair Stella Gray will let go back there. Working some dirt in. This dirt, by the way, if you're looking at it thinking, where is that South Carolina red clay? Well, you're looking at the result of years of South Carolina red clay and aged horse manure. That's what gives me the soil that I have. All right. Now, I'm going to leave you in a close-up, because I want you to see what I'm going to do now. Remember when I said it's the opposite? I'm pretty well in there. Tamping it in with my feet. Put my foot out. Very gently. I'm going to work this shovel out. This takes time. There we go. There's one. Same thing here. Support it a little bit. Work the shovel out. There's two. A little more dirt. You can see now, I've got a Madame Platts transplanted with the minimum amount of fuss. I'm just going to fill in the dirt a little bit more. Madame Platts is in her new home. Now, what I want to do now is talk a little bit about a couple of things. First of all, expectations, what you might see, so you not will be alarmed by that. Also, fertilization, and last but not least, watering once again. We started with it, we're going to end with it. Now, expectations. Okay, the rose has gone through a shock. It's been moved. I'm going to expect some of this tender growth that I have here. I have a new basil break here I managed to save by sustaining that root ball. It might droop a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it. I expect in a week or two to see it come back up again. If it doesn't, I can always take the tip off a little bit if it dies back. Yellow leaves falling off, turning yellow and falling, I'm going to expect to see that. I'm going to expect to see maybe a little dieback. I can clean that up a little bit. It's going to take three to four weeks for this rose to recover. Don't be surprised by any of that. Fertilizing. A lot of people say you shouldn't fertilize a rose when you first plant it or when you move it. Depends on what you're fertilizing it with. They're not all the same. If you're using a chemical fertilizer that's a liquid, that's like an instant hit kind of thing, no, I wouldn't use that. That's like a high energy drink. It's just bam, and the rose just can't sustain that right now. It can't handle that. It needs to grow its roots. But you can use some time release fertilizers. I like the products, of course, in the Peter Beals Natural Rose Care Program, which we put together with Organic Plant Health out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and their website's on the screen right now. Those work really well because they're organic. They're slow release, okay? Osmocote, slow release, works well. Vitamin B1 is something you hear about. Yep, absolutely. I got no problem with that at all. Watering. You're going to water it the same way you were watering it beforehand. Remember we talked about that trickle irrigation, drip irrigation? You want to think of that. And here's why. Imagine you've got a big cup of water and you want to drink it all at once. Well, if you just drink it, you can drink it fairly quickly. But if you've got a small straw, it takes you longer to drink that same volume or amount of water. It's the same with the rose. When it was in its old location, it had a big cup to drink from. Roots out to here. It now doesn't have that. So in order to get the same amount of water up in here, it's like drinking through a small straw root system. It's going to take longer. That's why I like to run the hose for 45 minutes at a trickle and let it slowly soak up that water or do what I'm doing now. I transplanted it because I'm looking over there. I've got thunderheads. It's going to rain. That would be the greatest thing in the world. So that's basically all there is to it. You're going to see some leaf drop, fertilize with time releases or organics, that's okay. The trickle theory or drip theory of watering is fine. And remember, our tools from the Research Institute, the two shovels. So, in the end, moving a rose during dormant season is best, but if you have to move it during the spring or even the heat of the summer, this system works great. I've moved hundreds of roses. I've never lost one. Just be patient, take your time, and remember, trust your gardener's instincts.